Okay, everybody, so I wanted to start off this Comparative Anatomy Lab YouTube page by talking about the hepatic portal system because it's something that you guys need to understand and it's very important because it's found out, it's found in most organisms throughout the animal kingdom. So we're gonna go through this in detail today. All right, so let's start off with the liver. Now, the hepatic, the word hepatic means of or relating to the liver. So if you ever see the word hepatocytes, for instance, those are gonna be your liver cells. And of course, the hepatic artery is what's gonna be carrying blood to the liver. Now, the liver is typically the largest organ in the body. Um, most of you saw the liver in the dogfish shark. It's gigantic, and that's pretty much the same for most organisms. Now, the liver has a number of different functions, but some of them include detoxification of blood and removal of waste material, um, the production of bile, and bile is obviously that emulsifier. It's going to break down lipid droplet, droplets to increase the surface area that enzymes can interact with to break down. And it also stores energy or glucose. Now, the liver has dual blood supply, which is why it's really important. It has blood coming to it through the hepatic artery, and then, of course, blood coming to it through the portal. Now, let's start off with what is a portal system? Well, a portal system is a system of blood vessels that has a capillary network at each end. And there are two main portal systems in mammals. That's your hypothecial portal system, which is located in your anterior pituitary, and the hepatic portal system, which is what's um, relating to the liver. And we're going to talk about the hepatic portal system today. The hypothecial portal system is up in that anterior pituitary, and it's maintaining a concentration gradient of hormones coming from the hypothalamus and down the pituitary. Now, some organisms also have this renal portal system having to do with the kidney, but that's not actually found in mammals, so we're not going to worry about that. And, of course, the significance of this portal vein is that it's transporting products in high concentrations between those two regions, so it's maintaining that concentration gradient. So, as I said, in that hypothecial portal system, it's maintaining the concentra concentration gradient of hormones from one capillary network to another. Now, the hepatic portal system obviously has to do with the liver, and the hepatic portal vein is going to carry blood from different gastrointestinal organs to the liver. So gastrointestinal organs include the stomach, the pancreas, the spleen, the gallbladder, the intestines, and the duodenum, which is the first portion of the small intestine, and of course a number of different organs as well. So the portal vein is going to carry blood from these different organs and the products that were absorbed from these different organs to the liver. So what's happening at the side of the liver, so you have blood that's being carried through the vein to the liver. This blood is going to contain absorbed minerals and nutrients that were absorbed from the food bolus. Um, so right in the small intestine, there's a lot of absorption and secretion taking place. And all those minerals and nutrients that were absorbed are now going to go to the liver through the portal vein. And the liver will then process these nutrients, and it'll also filter toxins that might have been ingested. So it needs to convert toxins into water-soluble toxins that can be secreted. And it does this in a number of um, enzymatic pathways. There's two phases, but the, you don't need to know this. Just in general, realize that it involves oxidation, reduction, and hydrolysis. Um, so this is kind of what I want you to understand about the hepatic portal system, Okay, something that might come in handy later on.